so many of you are informally dressed. I wanted to ask to come here in suit and tie. I think many of you would have been wondering how come a foreign minister has been invited to address you. The reason is because around the year 2000, when I was the Minister for Trade Industry, we gave a major push to the biomedical sector. And Philip Yeo was, was always a bundle of energy, quickly worked to develop the darkness. And I've come back in the early years to see how things were going. And it's nice to be back. I must confess, however, that when Jackie invited me, my immediate instinct was to say no because there's so many things afoot in the foreign affairs field. And I, I thought this is a different subject which I didn't have time to think about. <laughs> but there was a side of me which, which, which said, no, no, this is something that I was involved in and it'd be interesting to go back to see how it's developed. And I'm glad to be back. And before coming here to address you, she brought me to the labs to talk to some of the researchers and to be briefed on some of the things that are happening here. And it is exciting. It is good to have the third ICBN back in Singapore. It's the first international conference devoted to the new possibilities at the interface of bioengineering and nanotechnology. And by integrating engineering at the two ends, scientists can create new biomaterials and medical devices which mimic biological systems and functions. Since the launch of the National Nanotechnology Initiative by the US in the year 2000, at least 35 countries around the world have initiated national programs in nanotechnology. And it's been estimated that from 1997 to 2003, government organizations worldwide have increased their R&D investment in the field sixfold. And in Singapore, we have identified it from quite early as an exciting new area for our own economic development. ASTAR's objective is to stimulate university research through specific program initiatives such as nanoelectronics, polymer and molecular devices, computational material science, and electromechanical systems, MEMS and NAMS. Presently, the research institutes of ASTAR do nanotechnology research in areas like nanomagnetism, spintronics, nano-imprinting, nanophotonics, nanocomposites, and applied catalysis. IBM, of course, does research at the interface of nanotechnology and bioengineering. And since its inception in 2003, the staff has grown to, I got it here as 180, but I heard Jackie mention 181. So between the time the speech was written and this morning, it's increased by one. Researchers are recruited from over 19 countries, from top universities in the US, Europe, and Asia. For a relatively young institute, IBN has done rather well, creating novel materials, medical devices, and chiral pharmaceuticals, resulting in 346 publications and 380 patent applications in the past four years. I remember having a long conversation with President Shimon Peres in Israel two years ago about the importance of nanotechnology. In case you don't know, he's become an absolute convert and in many ways a missionary in nanotechnology, seeing in some of the new advances in scientific development hopes for a transcending of age-old problems in the Middle East. But he's always been an idealist. And God knows that in the place of the Middle East, you do need people who are idealistic. As for Taiwan, they, 
they are called on the ball all the time and searching for new ways to do things and very quick to bring things to commercialization. Just yesterday I visited, I met a Taiwanese visitor and he gave me a coffee mug. So I was wondering why did he give me a coffee mug? Then I looked at the fine print, they said made of nano material. <laughs> <laughs> and if I were to pour Coca-Cola into it, all the gas would quickly fizzle off. And I felt it. It felt like Tsusa, you know, this uh, special material from Lake Taipo, which they used to make teapots. I thought, oh, maybe they found a new way to make the old clay. So I'm still experimenting with it. I think I'll make some tea and see how whether it is any different. But that's Taiwan. They're very quick, sensing new opportunity, move, commercializes, commercialization. And for Singapore, a city-state which lacks space and has no natural resources, the biomedical sector suits us well. We are small, very small, but we are quite well run. And having a cosmopolitan outlook, Singaporeans welcome foreigners into our midst, into our schools, into our housing estates, they're everywhere, at hawker centres, in the neighbourhood shops and so on. Our culture here enables people of diverse backgrounds to come and work together on the basis of equality, using English as a common language. And since our free trade agreement with the US was signed a few years ago, our protection of intellectual property has become the best in all of Asia. And that's proved to be a great advantage. In six years, the, va the value of the biomedical sector in Singapore more than tripled from six billion US from six billion Singapore dollars in the year two thousand to twenty three billion dollars last year. And the future of the sector looks promising. For R and D, the activities are concentrated here at the Barclays. And we were quite flat <coughs> when Science Journal described the Barclays as a scientific emerald city. Babu Naidu, the former chief minister of Andhra Pradesh, which is a, a state in the, in the south of India, he's an able man with a fast-headed view of information technology. One night we were having dinner on Singapore River, and he described Singapore to me as a city built on nanotechnology. Which took me by surprise. Then he explained, he meant it figuratively of course, he explained to me why a big country like India should be interested in the intricate workings of a city-state like Singapore. Singapore adds value, not by skill or volume, but in the selection of good ideas and the development of new ideas. And ideas are like seeds. They occupy little space, but really they're the most important. You have a good seed, you produce a valuable crop. You have a good fry, the fish farm is profitable. In every area, the right DNA is decisive. And Singapore thrives only to the extent that it is a crucible for interesting ideas and a habitat for interesting people. We cannot create such a mix by ourselves. We have to be like an Italian Renaissance city state, like a Venice or Mantua or Florence or Milan, welcoming talented individuals from near and far and facilitating their creative development. And on this basis, Singapore has plenty of space, which was a point Naidu was making to me. And as, as I leafed through the resumes of many of you making presentations at ICBM 2007, I must confess to being in awe of your knowledge and accomplishments. Many of the titles of your publications I don't even begin to understand. You're a remarkable collection of brilliant minds, and we are so fortunate to have all of you in Singapore. I wish you a, a productive and an interesting conference.